right, welcome everyone. This is Chris and uh, thanks for coming by. We're gonna create a beautiful uh, painting today. We're gonna paint flowers. We're doing magnolias. We're gonna cover all the steps, all the methods, the techniques of how to create this beautiful um, grouping of flowers. Um, you can work from this. This is actually the finished painting. So if that's something you wanna do, you can always uh, pause on the video and actually be able to um, work right from this. We also draw this very carefully. So further on in the video, uh, over the next 10 or 15, 20 minutes, if you keep going forward in the video, you'll notice that we draw this twice. We do a preliminary sketch first, which is a very light sketch to lay out everything. And then once we have that done, then we go over uh, again on top of the very, very light sketch with a contour drawing, which is a, a very fl free flowing drawing uh, over the top of our preliminary sketch where we get everything in nice and solid with our pencil lines. And uh, once we're completed with that, then we uh, show all the steps and techniques and all the uh, methods to mixing colors and getting these uh, flowers uh, looking beautiful with the um, leaf forms and the stems, all the wonderful colors in this. This is just a great uh, fun painting to do. You can do this in a small format or a large format. Um, it's the same. If you maybe create this in a small format first, like this, which is maybe a six by 10, then you can um, maybe take a larger scale uh, paper, 12 by 16, and just create the same idea. Just use the same techniques, the same methods. Uh, just enlarge it a little bit, and then you can have a beautiful painting you can create, put in a frame, put a mat around it, put it in a nice frame, and you have a beautiful painting. So uh, let's get started, um, and uh, we'll get into all the details of uh, painting these magnolias. All right, so we're getting back started again here. Uh, we just saw the finished painting and uh, we can work from that. So if you feel comfortable and you wanna work from a finished watercolor painting, I like to do that myself. I do a lot of work from uh, other, just looking at other watercolor paintings and, and painting from those, drawing and painting from those. Or you can start from scratch and work from the uh, drawing here, the photograph actually. We, we have this, this uh, these are magnolias and I uh, found this online. So I just printed out the picture. Um, I thought what would be helpful too is sometimes uh, drawing uh, stems and things like that, it's a little bit challenging. I, I, I've done this before and uh, I just went into the backyard here and I have a branch that I uh, found. So I have a branch here and it's similar to the one we have here in this picture. So there's a branch, it branches out into a Y shape. So I found a um, branch that's similar. And the only thing is some crumbs. You have to have a little, um, I have a brush nearby. So once we're done, I'll use the brush and I'll sweep off the crumbs off our watercolor paper in our workstation here. Uh, I'm trying to make sure not to get any in the paints, uh, some of the uh, uh, bark and things like that. But we could start off by getting our drawing in and using this branch just to get a really good um, start with our shape of the uh, branch here for our magnolias and I think I'm going to do this and I'll get my pencil here so I'll just do a light uh, light sketch around this here like so just a very light sketch I'm going to run my pencil along the, the branch here I have and then over here, another bit of uh, branch over here. And that's all. Just a little bit of that light pencil sketch to get a shape going for our stems. And I'm going to find a brush here. There we go. And we can start drawing in our leaves and 
flowers next. And I think we'll try the same approach. Um, this is just a light sketch, a preliminary sketch, getting things sort of in the right place we want them to before we fully go in and do our, um, our drawing, our contour drawing. So now what I'll do is I'll, I'll maybe try to just lightly sketch in these shapes here. There's another, you can let things, um, you can draw things right out of the, the frame of your uh, painting. So I'm drawing right out onto the tape. So we have a smaller leaf form here, a larger leaf form over here. You can exaggerate too. It tends to look good if we can make things uh, non-symmetrical. So we'd want to try to avoid um, drawing the same size leaves. Even if they're the same size that you're looking at in a photograph or even in nature, if you can try to um, get a little bit more uh, variation, that would be good. And then we have this one here. And then we come down and then we have our, our magnolia flower here. And again, just very light sketching. As you can see, I'm going very light. I might go a little darker now just so that you can see. I draw out of the picture frame. And I'm sort of contour drawing now. I'm just tracing over the, the light sketching portion here. This might be a little larger like that. Like that. Okay, that's the magnolia flower in the center. It's the center of the flower there. And we're going to do these loosely, not too. And we're going to try to get that leaf there. And then there's another leaf here, like so. And then over here, we can adjust things a little bit. I'll take my uh, kneaded eraser and just erase this line here a little bit over here. We don't have to always stick exactly with the game plan. So you're going to see I lifted up this pencil line here just <clears throat> with the kneaded eraser. I lifted up that because I want the I want to stick pretty close to what the drawing is so that it, it comes over here more, the stem, like that. And then we have the, we have the, and there's another couple. Again, I'm doing a light sketch. There's another leaf form under there, and then another one here. Goes underneath like that. We have this. <clears throat> now we'll come over here and we'll do another. our preliminary sketch. Uh, I think I might stick with this and not really go in and do, um, well, I'll do the contour drawing.
Hey, we're back. We're going to get started on our contour drawing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, now, again, we just to refresh quick, we did our preliminary sketch first, super light, just to get everything in its proper place so we're happy with it. You can always erase a little bit with your, reated, uh, with your kneaded eraser uh, as you're going to, you know, get some better uh, lines down that you think look more accurate to your picture. Or if you want to enhance it a little bit, you can do that too by erasing a little bit. But the thing is to try to, uh, the least amount of uh, erasing is really preferred. You know, nothing's going to be perfect with this, you know, especially with plants and flowers and things like that. You know, they're, they're very um, uh, loose and the feel of them, you can, you can rearrange things a little bit here and there and it's not going to matter much. But you do want to stick to this picture as close as you can. And we did use, again, just to refresh, to get our first uh, lines of the um, stem, the stems in this, which are in a Y shape. I went outside in the backyard. I got a um, twig from, from the branches, the evergreen uh, bushes in, at the house here. And we just used that. I laid it down onto the paper and then traced the branch so that I got that real organic looking uh, sketch of the um, branches here. So that really helps a lot too. I mean, I wouldn't use a ruler for this to get a straight line, obviously. Sometimes it's hard to get something accurate, like long lines are difficult sometimes. So there's also, um, you know, silk flowers sometimes. Um, I've used silk flowers to draw from. I could have used one of those. I didn't have any handy of those, but those work too. A silk flower with the stems, you know, you can you can use a really large sheet of paper and use silk flowers and drop them onto the paper and trace around them too if you want. That's some fun stuff to do. Uh, I hope you'll continue to paint and draw and have a good time with your artwork. So sometimes if you do a little offbeat um, type of technique or method, you sometimes it rejuvenates your uh, excitement about doing some watercolors and painting and drawing and things like that. So I don't uh, really worry about that too much. So again, we're gonna so I'll start down here. I'll start in the middle. And this is the flower. And I'm just basically tracing, but I'm also looking back at the photograph too. Sometimes I can get a little more accurate lines when I look back at the picture while I'm doing this. And then this is fine there. And you never forget you're going to paint over this too, so you'll get you'll be able to adjust too when you're painting. And that looks pretty good. And so again, we did some more. And I'll just do a little bit of uh, touching up there. And I see I went over a line here. I wanted to keep that line there. 
that's a petal of the uh, magnolia underneath this main flower uh, section here and then this is like so And that's fine. <clears throat> so we have our, and then I might just take a couple. Once in a while, just I erase a couple spots just to. All right, we're going to get uh, started with painting now. I would say here. Let's uh, let's use a large brush for this painting. I'm going to look around here. Maybe a 12. I'm going to try a 12 size 12 brush. Uh, da Vinci Maestro watercolor brush, round brush. So you can kind of see this brush fits pretty good with the the um, size of the petals. And what happens is if you, this is probably a little bit of a larger brush for, for most. I know watercolor artists tend to use smaller brushes, but I think try to always upsize your brush once in a while and see how it performs for you. And I think it, it'll work well in this painting. So if you can match up, some of you will draw this smaller than I'm drawing this here. Some of you might draw it larger. So what I would say is try to match up the, um, the brush hairs to the size of the um, petals. So if they're about the size of the petals, that looks good of this uh, drawing. So most of these are right, perfect size. And if we use this, we'll, we'll tend to do less, uh, a lot of strokes and a lot of painting moves. If we use a larger brush, we're going to cover more ground quickly. And I'll, I'll explain how this works. Like as far as using a larger brush, you can really enhance the look of your watercolor painting. Um, you can also maybe more easily add more variations in color as well, because you can load up your brush with different colors and then just place it down onto the paper and then maneuver it from there and, and you know, smooth out that wash. So we'll do that and I'll explain how we do that in just a second. But again, if your brush can match the size of the petals, then that's a good size. If it's a little smaller, a little larger, I guess it would be okay. So what we'll do is we'll start with the darks and I'll go with ultramarine, a little burnt umber, sap green, lots of sap green. Um, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna in there. Maybe some olive green too. And these leaves have a kind of a bluish look. So now we take our brush, we load it up with all those colors we just put out onto the palette. And we'll start, uh, let's start here. And then we can set our brush down like that. And again, we pick up more of that color and we'll go over here. We, we always want to try to avoid leaning into that paint. So as we put that paint down, we want to keep our hand away from that area so we don't lean back into that and then we just do another shape over here and there we have it and now we're just going to do that negative shape painting where we paint around that white flower and the petal appears And we'll do one more. Let's do burnt sienna, 
French ultramarine blue, sap green, a little bit of olive green, maybe a little bit of Viridian green too. And I'm careful not to lean into my paint. I'm always going to take a quick look when I'm ready to make some brush strokes onto my flowers here. I'm going to look and make sure I don't lean in to the uh, painting and to the fresh paint. Once it's dry, then it's okay. You can rest your hand on dry paint. And let's go with a little more of a change right here. We'll add a little bit of cadmium lemon, ye cadmium yellow lemon, just to add a little lighter. Maybe there's a little bit of a lighter feel over here. And then again, the same colors, burnt sienna, sap green, olive green, French ultramarine blue. Then we can spin our brush around the other way. Use the point of our brush to get that point of the leaf form. Then we can a little more burnt sienna. Maybe we add in a little bit of raw umber now. Raw umber to that mix. Burnt sienna. And we'll do some uh, stems here. We'll do this stem. And the stem is just slowly upward. I will get a little more water here. We'll make it a little lighter here and there so we don't keep that. We want to maybe keep it from looking the same tonal value the whole way. You can also, as you're working, you can dab a little bit of paint off. That works too. That's pretty good. That kind of gives a feel of uh, like some light on the uh, stem. And there's a couple. You can do the same thing. You can use a little bit of a tissue and maybe here and there you just blot up a few little spots. And you just remember to keep folding your tissue around so that you're not going to re-blot onto the paper with the wet paint. You just blot it up over here. Then you change your tissue around. And we maybe go over here like that. Look at that. Now we got all this variation happening. Again, I'll take my tissue, roll it up into a different spot so there's no paint on there. And like that. There we go. So now we've added lots of variation. We put some really beautiful paint on here. Straight paint out of the tube. I didn't use hardly any water. Just a damp brush here really. Then we can take a little bit of cerulean blue and just infuse a couple areas with some some wash into there. Cerulean blue. And I'm going to use that cerulean blue also to just make a couple splashes just to make things a little exciting here. There we go. Okay, let's take a break. We'll let this dry because now we're, we're going to have that issue where we might start leaning into our paint. So that's a great reason why we kind of take breaks. So let's take a break. Let this dry. These lower petals here and this stem. Let that dry 100%. And then we can go back in and we'll start working up here in the top portions of this uh, this scene here. Okay, all right, we'll be right back.
All right, so now we're going to continue on our uh, magnolia flowers. I'm going to go with a little bit of a smaller brush now, number eight. Same thing, a Da Vinci uh, round brush, watercolor brush. And uh, this number eight is going to just help me to put in some shadowing here in the uh, the flowers. And we're going to go with the uh, the mixture of cerulean blue, uh, ultramarine violet, cerulean blue for our shadowing in the flowers. Uh, also some ca cad uh, yellow lemon. And then for the center, we'll use some raw umber for the center of the uh, flower. So that'll be our color mixes. Then we'll, we'll go in here. And I'm just gonna carefully look at the picture. I might pick up a little bit of mixture there, just a little bit to mellow that out a touch. But, well, I'm actually gonna go in and Carefully look at my There's a little bit of the lemon color there A little bit of that cadmium lemon yellow. In the center of the flower, I'm going to go up here. Then there's a darker shadow, so I'll make this a little bit darker. A little bit of that mix in there. I'm just adding a little bit of the um, mix that we were using for the petals. Uh, I mean, for the leaf forms. I just mixed that in with the cerulean blue and purple just to like kind of mellow the color out a little bit too much. Sometimes there's just too much uh, intense color. So sometimes if we just make it a little bit, gray it down just a little bit, it tends to look a little better. It will dry lighter. Oh, we always say that in watercolor. Your watercolor, when you put your paint onto the paper, it normally will, normally it'll dry about half as light as when you're putting it onto the paper. Except when you're putting straight paint down onto the paper, that tends to stay pretty close to. But if you're adding quite a bit of water to your paints, then it's going to dry lighter. For, that's for sure. So we'll continue to. Um, more shadowing there. I would definitely leave um, white paper. I think that's pretty good. And I just uh, dabbed in a little bit of the raw umber in the center. And over here. There's some shadowing on this uh, bud over here. Magnolia bud is over here. Um, Over here a little bit. There's some shadow there. 
I see. And what I'll try to do is follow the shadow I'm seeing in the photograph. Shadowing along there. There's a little bit of the lemon color. And some lemon there, cad lemon uh, yellow, cad cadmium uh, yellow lemon. That's the brand name, or the uh, name of the paint. Now, cerulean blue, I'm going to try to paint around the uh, top of this flower. And I just make some wash along the top here. I'm going to change out my water here. I think it's important when you start to do your lighter washes, like toward the uh, toward the finish of the painting, it's always good to have fresh, uh, clean water. So you can, you can work in some of these uh, light washes and there's not a problem with, we can keep it looking really light and fresh looking. And I'm just trying to highlight some of the uh, leaf, uh, the petals of the flower with some paint, cerulean blue. I can blot up too. And no big deal if you go over a line or something of a flower, you can just if the uh, blue is too 
we could add a little bit of raw umber to um, some orange maybe. And now I'm just adding a very, very little touch of color to the paper. A uh, very, very tiny amount of uh, cadmium orange, just to give it that warmth. No particular way to put it on, just have fun. I'm thinking of the radiating forms of the leaves like this, so I just move some paint around. There's some purple and blue again. We're going to repeat those same colors throughout. So I'm just going to kind of do that. Maybe a couple small brush strokes up this way here, just to kind of repeat the same pattern of the And once it dries, it'll be much more subtle. The uh, light washes, those are going to dry a lot lighter. So right now you might be thinking it's a little bit too much um, washes on the paper, but I think it, it'll dry and look lighter and just be a subtle amount of color just to uh, Alright, I thank everyone for watching. We'll probably um, try this again in the next come, you know, maybe the next uh, month, let's say. We'll probably come back, revisit doing some more paintings like this, flower paintings, uh, doing the technique of just uh, a la prima, going in, drawing first, and then putting down our paints, uh, the darks first, and then our lights last, and then we put in our very delicate washes at the end. These are white flowers, so they tend to, um, we have to work a little more uh, with very light washes, which is fun. That's a good thing to practice, light washes, to get in some subtle shading. And then sometimes we'll be doing more uh, vibrant, exciting colors of flowers, maybe oranges, reds, purples. So some we, know, we don't always paint white flowers, but white flowers are fun. They give us some challenges of trying to do some shadowing and get everything looking good. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.